Well, there's what the hangar looks like after being away for three weeks in Florida and a week at work. I got the better part of a foot of snow to remove. Well, let's get to it. Welcome to Jeff Rowe's Wide World of Sport Aviation. Hey, Jeff Rowe. As I taxi my bird out to the out past the hangars and to the run up area and eventually onto the runway for takeoff, I'd like to. Uh, give a brief explanation of the purpose of this flight and this video. I haven't flown in six weeks so the main purpose of the flight is just to go get some stick time in. So this is a stick and rudder video and it's a video on the mechanics of flying. And further to that description what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to do six circuits two of which with no flaps, two with one notch of flaps, and two with full flaps. And try to demonstrate how this affects the approach, the flare, and of course the, uh, the landing rollout. As in uh, how, far, how far you end up running down the, rolling down the runway uh, due to your approach speed. Okay, the run-up's over. Put this into four or five times real speed. Look both ways before you enter the runway. Get it in the position. And I don't like to stop and sit there for two seconds or five seconds. I like to maintain my momentum and let her rip. speed and the vertical speed indicator. This first approach is going to be 80 miles an hour and no flaps as stated before. Aiming for the numbers. Hold it off, hold it off. Not a bad landing after being out of the game for six weeks, but no way I was gonna I was gonna get stopped by that intersection. Approach number two, same setup, no flaps, eighty miles an hour.
again, aiming for the numbers. Can't quite get her down. Well, this is the third approach. And here's where I put in one notch of flaps and aim for 70 miles. Control it, trim it for 70 miles an hour. Again, aiming for the numbers. Bring it in, bring it in. Hold it, hold it. And again, we float a little bit. Try that, try that setup one more time. 70 miles an hour, one notch of flaps. Aiming for the numbers. time I get it down just past the numbers but again the rollout is not the rollout is too much to uh, enable me to, to get stopped or turned off at that intersection now this is 60 miles an hour full flaps I actually get it down on the hash marks before the numbers here, which definitely has an influence on the fact that I am able to get it stopped so short. I am well short of that intersection. But I couldn't do that if my speed was higher. So I'm re-demonstrating 60 miles an hour, about four or 500 feet per minute sink rate. Again, same scenario, aiming for the numbers. This time, bang, I think I'm right on the numbers that time. And with moderate braking, I'm able to get stopped again by that intersection. Well, after six goals up the circuit. Uh, so I had to just take the airplane out for a, about a half hour rip across the countryside. Here I'm bringing it in over the middle of the field, turning downwind. This is about five times the actual airspeed of my airplane. And I'm going to give it one more a kick at the can here. Seventh and final landing of the day, full flaps, 60 miles an hour. Again, aiming for the numbers. Bring it in. Pretty well right on the numbers again. And again, with the low approach speed, I have no trouble whatsoever getting the aircraft under control and slowed down enough to make that intersection. Let's revisit the first approach at 80 miles an hour from a different perspective. Most pilots will use an approach speed higher than what they really need to when they're coming into an airfield for a landing. And the main reason they do it is because it's easier. It's easier on the pilot, and to some degree, it's easier on the, on the aircraft during the flare. It's easier to transfer the energy. In this situation that I'm demonstrating is a power-off approach. It's easier to transfer that energy into the flare and hold the airplane off as long as possible and give yourself a nice greaser landing and that's why most pilots do it. Now let's revisit the last approach, number seven, 60 miles an hour and full flaps. Most pilots, including myself, don't normally approach an airfield in this configuration. 
I typically approach it 70 miles an hour. It's harder on the pilot and it's harder on the airplane because again, in this scenario, it's power off configuration. You're flying much closer to the stall speed. There's not as much energy left in the airplane and it's not very long as you, as you flare and pull the stick back. The energy dissipates almost immediately and you have the tendency as what happens here is to drop it onto the runway. So I'm not just trying to get this airplane down as short as possible. I'm not trying to win any kind of a stall competition. I practice this because this is the scenario I will want if my engine ever quits. I will be, I will be proficient with it. I haven't paced that intersection off, but <laughs> maybe I will and I'll get it into this video uh, before I release it. I figure it's somewhere between three and 400 feet. But I will get that verified. Couple last turns here. Make sure the taxiways and everything is clear.